watching AYV Television. Good evening, I am Marina Terry and this is AYV's Primetime News. Here are tonight's headlines. 22 Sierleanians jail in Guinea, return home after 10 months in prison. Now, we are about to catch week. From we are about to catch week, we are next day, November 5, last year, 2020. Mintagba village in Kaine district gets primary school after 187 years. It means that uh, for 187 years, all the beginning, the great gate to forefather, the grandpa, the women there, then they work at distance for access to primary education. An NCIA holds consultative meeting on strengthening births and death registration in Freetown municipality. Commencing it that we owe a lot of gratitude as a government. Now for the full news. The National Civil Registration Authority has held a one-day consultative meeting with local and tribal heads of the western area on the need to strengthen births and deaths registration in the municipality. Ransford Lubimezika has more on the story. The purpose of the meeting is to provide updates on activities and programs regarding the successful implementation of the Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Initiative in Sierra Leone. In his statement, the Director General of the National Civil Registration Authority, Mohamed Mubashi Masakoy, referred to the process of legal review of the NCI Act and data protection laws. Key. So, in discussing the processes, this is one which cannot be overemphasized. The process of legal review of the NCI Act and the data protection law we are developing in this country has commenced in earnest. Commencing it that we owe a lot of gratitude as a government to the European Union for leading the process of reviewing the Act and even drawing, further drawing the attention of government and all the partners, stakeholders to the challenges we have in implementing the NCRA mandate in this country. Of course, the recommendations from the Electoral Observer Mission of 2018 elections complement earlier assessments done. The co-chair of the steering committee referred to the meeting as a moment of stock-taking as to where they are and are going in terms of the review. To add that these meetings are mainly for stock-taking. Stock-taking as to where we are in our collective resolve to deal with the issue of legal identity in Sierra Leone. That's why all of us are here. This is what kept all of us busy over the period. Not only busy in terms of human capacity, but also using resources to support this venture. So steering committee gives us um, the understanding as to what has already happened, what gains we have made, and how um, do we chart uh, the way forward. Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs, Lahai Lawrence Lima, said the CIVS steering committee is vital in ensuring that policies are met and the standards to which it will be required. I welcome you all to the Ministry for the second CRVS steering committee meeting this year. As a governance outfit, the CRVS steering committee is vital to ensuring that the policies and systems for CRVS meet best practice, standard, and in purpose as well as in practice. We are here today to, to make our valuable inputs into the legal reforms recommended in the civil registration policy, the comprehensive country assessment conducted in the 2019 and the five-year strategic national plan 2019 to 2023. 
Amongst issues discussed were data protection policy and bill, review of Civil Registration Act of 2016, and regulations, among others. The first ever reggae music festival in Sierra Leone with the theme Make Sierra Leone Green is set to take place in Freetown before this year ends. The aim of the reggae musical festival, according to the organizers, Ripster Culture Sierra Leone, is to raise awareness on how to treat the environment, climate change and its adverse effects on humanity. In a press release, Sori Obai Kamara, chief executive officer of Rip Culture, said Sierra Leone is ranked as the world's third most disaster prone nation. Albert George Sheriff witnessed the press briefing and now reports. Reading out the press release on behalf of Sori Obai Kamara, aka Obi Free, Sierra Leone's music ambassador to Europe, head of Sierra Leone Consulate Planning Team in Finland, and the chief executive officer of Ripster Culture, Dr. Alex Bangura, project manager, Ripster Culture Sierra Leone, said some of the percentage of the proceeds from the reggae festival will be used to purchase and plant trees across the country. He added that they decided to have the marginalized reggae musicians and dancers to spread the message on how we should treat our environment, climate change, and its adverse effects on humanity. It's our responsibility to educate our people on steps to be taken in mitigating those environmental hazards surrounding climate change. According to research on global climate change, Sierra Leone is named as one of the countries that will suffer from future climate disasters. We have decided to have the marginalized reggae musicians and dancers spread this message through songs, dance and live band performances. Let us plant more trees, stop cutting down trees, extinction of animals and insects and embark on clean agricultural practices for food sufficiency in our beloved country. The Sierra Leone Reggae Movement is one of the partners of Ripster Culture in organizing the Reggae Festival. According to German president of the Sierra Leone Reggae Movement, they are delighted because of far too long they and their journey of music have been neglected. We don't be marginalized for quite a long time. And me when they talk so, when the 11 years war come, pass what we are going to we suffer. Music not a goal with war or music not a go when there is a pandemic, even this last one on a corona, we still they suffer because nobody cares about we. Various partners including the Union of Musical Performing Artists, Sierra Leone Green School Club, Sierra Leone United Band Association, Spot the Talents and many more made statements expressing their commitment to grace the Make Sierra Leone Green Climate Resilience first ever reggae festival, Phases of Freetown. For AYV Primetime News, I am Albert Judge Sheriff reporting. The Countess of Hunting Don's Connection in Sierra Leone has celebrated its 20th anniversary at the church headquarters in Freetown. Speaking during the celebration, the Commissioner for Anti-Corruption Commission, Commission Francis Ben Kaifala, called on worshippers to stay with God while they perform national duty as it requires self-discipline and accountability. A reporter, Sheikh Mohammed Sula, has more. The contest of Antidon's connection was founded in 1783 as a result of evangelizing to some settlers in the United Kingdom. Many of the members of the congregation in Nova Scotia later immigrated to settle in Sierra Leone, the new British colony in West Africa. Today, the connection has 22 congregations in England and more than 30 in Sierra Leone. The Anti-Corruption Commission Commissioner Francis Ben Kaifala expressed his concern about the food against injustices and corruption in Sierra Leone. Because even the people themselves need to know what we want and go for it and support what we do. Support the fight against corruption. Support standing voice. Speak the truth like how the reverend they talk. Let the, the churches unite in voice against injustice, against unfairness, against inequality. If we do that, Monsieur, let the 
throw this guy agenda. Let me throw this guy a manifesto. Where they present on behalf of the body of Christ. And tell the people they say, this is the owner for support in the election. This is the owner for ask for from the leaders. This is the owner for standing. Like I said, the last time I've been able to come to John, there was another program somewhere in Wataloa, we go. This is now one of the most religious countries in the world. It's very old. 99% statistics say they ask people there. 99% they say, I believe in God. We get for stand for the country. We get for support with the good. We get for remove that feeling of hypocrisy. Me, I see hypocrisy first time this country. That's the solution of this. The day, oh, what okay, case we put there? Teachers are going to sleep with students and forgive them for allowing them for six hours. You arrest them. And then you will take them to the bottom of the street. They come to the call from my head to the call. Tyler Reverend Magnus Bendu speaks more on the history of the church and the celebration. I go back because in a subcrow we have a bottom. So you go to a batch down and you go to evangelize the black God at them and then you're able to win them. And the way you evangelize to them, in the name of the councils of Antigua, that that group they were evangelized to, and in the council alone, where they own company. Because when they can, they get several companies. And the pastors were already the companies, where they come. So the councils of Antigua's company, that the one part, where they own the company, where they where they belong to, where they are the evangelists, that they come with them. The celebration was climaxed with launching ceremony by the commissioner, of the anti-corruption commission. If God tell you that you ask for this photo, celebrating the goodness of God, celebrating the goodness of God and countless of all the Huntington community connection, 200,000 years and lasting 2022 Sierra Leone. Sheikh Mohammed Sile, AYV News, Freetown. Metangba village Karine district gets its first primary school after 187 years since the community was founded. An education project initiated by indigenes will avail learning opportunities to children, not only in this village but neighboring communities. Abbasisi witnessed this event and he now reports. Though past and current government have worked hard to reduce number of miles to access learning institutions, especially in rural communities, their efforts have not been so rosy, as children in certain communities across the country continue to trek miles to access both primary and secondary schools. People at Matengba village, Karine district, we are not strange on this social disadvantage, but with many hands on board, they are now having a sigh of relief by the construction of a three-classroom block, a project undertaken by indigents with support from others. Stalin Bangua Jr., who was one of the pioneers of this education project, made this statement during the opening ceremony of Baluke Primary School, Sanda Tindarin Chiefdom. 187 years past today, we begin the this town and the surrounding, they get access, that endorse, access to education at the endorsement than a first system. It means say, for 187 years, all the beginning, the great gate to forefather, the grandpa, the women there, then they work at distance for access to primary education. Some they work at 14 miles a day, some 10 miles a day, some 8 miles a day. We make illiteracy rates very high in this part of the country. So, with the blessing of the community, few people they will support to our state letter and largely by Bologna. We don't make history today for bringing education at the doorstep of a deprived community. We don't go for 187 years without access to education at the doorstep. So look. This new facility would shrink the distance used to be covered by pupils in neighboring communities, as affirmed by Musa Bashir Kabia, headmaster of the school. Now that they will not have a seat they will not have open this school. We are still glad because that school, you know, she even shakes them. At the beginning, the way they, they will be this school, uh, where they attend this school, that they come out as various villages at the past because let me say, let me say, not only Metamba, but Uga Rokonga, 
to get my fabuna ya to get uh, ma, even maron maro now madina mafori all that began here in the coconut kaya we are about uh, three months now off instead of seven months with them they talk of this made an event in the community ushers in many representatives at matengba village and among them is captain fabjanko kukan country director bolori transport and logistics sierra leone who was honorary crown as chief kapokawale interpreted as chief of lights i would like to thank all of you for coming and give me the opportunity to express my gratitude for hospitality and recognition this recognition is not for me Almighty. Drumming, singing, and dancing demonstrated appreciation from the community. Abba CC, AYV News, Kaine Districts. Now, 22 Sierra Leoneans who were in jail in Conakry, Guinea, have returned home after spending over 10 months in prison. These young Sierra Leoneans who were accused of being rebels were freed from the current military government after the overthrow of former President Alpha Conde. Ronald Jamorvia has more on the story. Arrested by Guinean soldiers on November 5th last year, these 22 young Sierra Leoneans were in jail for over 10 months after being accused of being rebels. They were arrested on their search for greener pasture, calls after calls from prison for the intervention of Sierra Leone's government to secure their freedom. These young Sierra Leoneans were only granted freedom by the current military government after the overthrow of President Alpha Conde. Some of them explain their audios. We are covered in Ketchwick. From we are covered in Kerugu and Mamu that next day, November 5, last year, 2020. So from Mamu and Kerugu and Kinder, from Kinder and Kitiskan, we come to in Konakri. The Kerugu and the CID, one of the biggest CID in Konakri day, we did about six days. We did a CID to investigate we. They're not proving, no right for say we are a rebel or whatever, but the accused say we are a rebel. So they take an instance because the leader will get now in a the vice president when I do the dialogue, she doesn't be done with G3 to be Max and I say, um, that flaman for win. Then he says hello to all the for that flaman. So that man we don't get that my heart. So they go only from there and court and can we go. From court, a place will find himself. All gone, the crack and pie, they push you, they knock you, they beat you up, say you need for talk, waiting, you not do. So we come and move, even the south side and say this nice cell, nice place where we say you not be too nice, cold. We all cry because we will need help to that day. Because we take and say the money, tell them we deport you back and we come to you, not knowing that they count you in a prison. Whatever move where they take, now net. They never work out with something. As they try to reintegrate, they are calling on government and humanitarian organizations to come to their aid, noting they've lost all their savings. We try to ask the proper government so that we can aid and try to help you. Because as for now, where I come, not too close, maybe me, me, they get right now. Food no day, they want meet my family, you know, waka waka, you know, tell where to. No car is now, they no car with nothing. And some of them can't, they meet them people, they don't die. Even shelter, a place for sleep, they don't get. So they cry to the government, let them say our best in cable come inside for help the young Sierra Leonean brothers there. Because at the time they will need them most. Like these young men, there are many Sierra Leoneans undergoing such difficulties in foreign lands just because they believe it is only out of Sierra Leone that they could make ends meet. Ronald Jomorovia, AYV News, Freetown. Well, this is Primetime News on AYV Television and Radio. Stay tuned for more stories after the break. for a place to get quality education but don't know how or where Canadian College of Modern Technology situated at 1 Silicon Hills Mile 91 opposite former Camp Charlie is the right place for you 
Canadian College of Modern Technology and athlete of Dallai University. It's a fully accredited college with a tertiary education commission, CEC, and a national commission for technical, vocation, other academic awards, NCTVA. We provide world-class tertiary education in computer science, business administration, mass communication, business information technology, Microsoft server administration, networking, database administration, building and construction, and other professional courses. Apart from its conducive environment, which makes it suitable for learning, Canadian College of Modern Technology is proud of its experienced local and international staffs. Come and experience its transformational learning environment, fully equipped with CCTV cameras, a world-class electronic library with the latest IMAC computers for collaborative learning and research, and access to high-speed internet service throughout the campus. And guess what? Canadian College of Modern Technology is the first college in Sierra Leone to operate the first educational purpose-only television and radio station for its mass communication students. Come and be part of this historic experience. We have reserved a space for you. You want to know more? CCMC provides 24 hours electricity from a solar harvest power supply system with a backup generator. These highly secure campus also have a canteen, student hostels with clean pipe-borne water. Canadian College offers many more amenities for our students to help make learning a good experience. For more information, contact us on these numbers 079-630-407 or 099-140-208. If you want to succeed, Canadian College will exceed your expectations. Canadian College of Modern Technology, a place where a career begins. Welcome back. I am Marina Terry and this is AYV's Primetime News. Let's take more stories. Now, 70, um, 75 school pupils who lost their parents during the Ebola outbreak in McKinney have been equipped with school items by Access to Education Sierra Leone. The support, according to the organization, is to make them feel belong in society. Abu Bakar Kamara reports. The aftermath of Ebola virus disease is eminent among victims as well as their immediate relatives. As this dreadful disease claims the lives of many people across the country, therefore many children have been left as orphans. Most of these vulnerable kids are being cared for by foster parents or guardians that lack the means to provide basic needs for this set of children. Though there is free education in the country, but an NGO in McKinney is complementing government's efforts by supporting short children in school. Access to Education Sierra Leone is the organization, and Mohamed Papa Bangura is coordinating this. It's a full package, a package that is very attractive, and the kids are so excited. You see them happy, they're dancing, uh, it tells you what it means, you know, receiving these new items. We gave them last year, and this year again we are giving them. It said we want them to feel like, you know, they have parents. We don't want them to continuously missing their parents for this reason. And that is why we're here to give them all the support. My sponsors in the UK are very much committed to ensure we have this project sustainable. I believe in education changing the story of a community, of people, of family. And that is why I'm so passionate about education. Because it's not just easy. I believe the joy that one could have if you receive a new uniform. If these children do not educate, at the end of the day, they will become thieves, they will become prostitutes, and other problems will emanate. Beneficiaries say this project is timely for them. They made this expression. They are doing great in our life, especially for we the girls that are doing great, because for we the girls who do have, especially me that I'm talking to you, Khadija too, I don't have money. My parents don't have money to spend those things, to buy the things for us. But through this project, um, I thank God for it. My parents though, are able to afford these properties. So due to the access to education, they have already made it comfort for us to have this, pro this scholarship. So I thank the, 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 the foundation and the people that are supporting the foundation. And even that, the, the particular man, the role model man that is working with the, the program for God and so for God to guide him. 75 children from various communities benefit. AYV Regional News, I am Abubakar Kamara from Ikeni. 
Now in sports, um, Sierra Leone international player Kwame Kui's Iceland side Viking has won the Icelandic championship title. According to the Vikings' official website, this is the sixth time the team has won the title. Our sports reporter Michael John Fofana has more. Sierra Leone international Kwame Kui, who rejoined Iceland side Vikings in September last year, has won the Icelandic championship title. According to the Vikings official page, the Vikings are the Icelandic champion in men's football in 2021 after a convincing 2 0 win over Lekne in the final round of the Premier League at Viking Vili. This is the sixth Icelandic championship title for the Vikings and the first in 30 years. The Vikings had their fate in their own hands because when the whistle blew for the sixth games in the final round, they had 45 points against the 44 points of the competitors. Sirelion's Kwame Kui has displayed an outstanding performance in helping the Vikings win the title. However, Kwame was part of the Sierra Leone squad that qualified the country to the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon next year. In other news, Sierra Leone's female under-20 squad defeated Guinea by a goal to nil through a 17-minute goal by Fatima Tature in the FIFA Women's U20 World Cup qualifiers in Senegal. And Sierra Leone's Issa Kalon scored twice as Carbon trashed Sparta, Rotterdam in a 4 nil win at home. Calon's goals came in the 63rd and 74th minutes respectively and his Sierra Leonean counterpart Alex Bangura opened the scoring in the 37th minute at the Sparta Stadion. This win means they stay 7th on the log until the Dutch top tie around 8 next week. And also saw Sparta lost its unbeaten home status. Left back Alex Bangura who was born in Sierra Leone registered his second goal of the season assisted by Isa Kalon, making Isa Kalon the man of the match. Michael John Fofana, AYV Sports, in Freetown. That's the end of Primetime News tonight. For more stories, visit our website on www.ayvnews.com. If you have any comments on the news, please send an email to info at ayvnews.com. I am Marina Terry. Many thanks for watching and listening. Stay safe and good night.